Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and in this video I'm going to be showing you a technique of stamping on vellum and this is a video that's geared more toward the beginner card maker more than the advanced card maker because I'm going to be showing you some basic, basic concepts um, but certainly if you've been crafting for a while you might need a refresher sometimes people forget about their vellum so uh, today I'm going to be using vellum that I've had in my stash. I did not buy anything new. This actually was uh, gifted to me. All these special pre-cut strips of vellum from uh, Stampin' Up! And this is a really, really nice, um, it's kind of heavy for vellum. Uh, vellum is simply just like a translucent type uh, material and great for card making, scrapbooking. I'm also going to open this up which I've had uh, for a few months. It was also gifted to me, but it was on discount uh, from Ollie's for 79 cents. So you might find that uh, as people maybe are, are uh, de-stashing, you might come across some vellum in a, in, as you pick up some de-stash items. So this is a great way to use vellum and to um, also just jazz up your card making, especially if you're new. First, I'm gonna show you a few projects that I made and I'm using the um, new release stamps today from Technique Junkies. These are the new release for um, August 2021. So the first one here is uh, this is a shaker card that I made and I just stamped the sentiment right there on vellum and put it right over top of the shaker as you could see and used, uh, this is white embossing powder by Ranger and <laughs> my Versamark ink, which went flying just now. Okay, so that's the first um, example. And because there's a glare, maybe I can prop this up here with my Versamark ink so that you don't see the glare. Um, the next one that I used with vellum, this is probably one of my favorite ones that I made with the new release set. <clears throat> stamping the sentiment right on the vellum. And um, I'm actually gonna have a tutorial for this card uh, later on in the month. So definitely hit that subscribe button, which is right down here on the corner, on the lower corner, It's a it should be a big red bar, or maybe it just says the word subscribe. It is free to subscribe. And then you'll always be notified um, when I post new videos. But I love this look, and this was um, embossed again with the Versamark stamping ink, but this time using some uh, ultra fine embossing powder by Brutus Monroe, this is Raven. But I love that look. It's so neat how you can see the paper behind it. And I think that's one of my favorite things about using vellum. Like in this card, I really was pleased with the way that it looked as a shaker. It just would have cut away from the whole look of the card if I would have uh, used a another piece of cardstock over top or just stamped it right over top. So I just like to do that sometimes. And this, look how much of the image, even if I just would have trimmed that down, I didn't want to cut away from that leopard image behind it. So I like to use vellum in uh, those instances where I just really don't want to take away from the background image. Another time I really like to use uh, vellum for stamping a sentiment is when I have just the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paper or a really cool stamp that I used in conjunction with gorgeous paper like this. And there really just was no good place for the way this sentiment, this is part of the new release. And so is this sentiment, or sentiment. So is this image with the boots. Let's see if I can show them to you somewhere. Yeah, here are the stamps. And uh, I just loved the way they look. But for me, and just for the, I wanted to use this paper. This is by Craft a Clock, and I wanted to make just a six by six card. It was just perfect to put this stamp right in the middle and color it with the same colors. But um, I just couldn't think of a way to have it on that paper and then not take away from that. So stamping on vellum, and I tore it with my hand, which, Where's that little piece I had out? You could see that with vellum, if you pull towards you, you get a real nice tear um, and you get two white edged sides. So you could real easily tear something um, 
hopefully I recommend stamping first because it's a lot easier to stamp on a big piece and then tear it away. But you can guide it real, I mean, I'm just tearing it loosely, but look how, if I took my time, you know, I could do it as um, straight or as condensed as I want. And another technique is to put a ruler down where you want and you just hold the ruler down with your hand and then tear up against it if you're type A personality and really want like a nice straight tear, then that's a way you could get that straight tear, okay? So vellum, really, really easy to tear, really nice um, translucent sentiment to uh, put on your cards and not take away from the main image of your card. Now, you saw that these two were done in white. This one was done in black. Vellum is pretty forgiving when it comes to stamping on it. And uh, you could try a few different things. Here's how, uh, this is another stamp from the new release. Let's see if I can grab it over here. <laughs> oh, here it is. <clears throat> and uh, here I did it in gold. Lots of nice embossing powders. Um, you know, that's a really nice fine. I do find that the f fine emboss embossing powders work a little bit better uh, than maybe the chunky. I have some that are, uh, this is a gold, that's kind of chunky as you can see. And uh, this one doesn't work as well for me on vellum. It just kind of blows around. So I tend to go for the fine one, but look how nice and crispy your white sentiment looks. Doesn't that look good? So I'll be finishing up this card here uh, on the video and um, with one of these sentiments here. Basically just not much different than this. We're just gonna find a piece of pattern paper, uh, put this down, maybe add some uh, little embellishments on top and, and call it a day. The other thing is that I'm going to use this stamp set, I think, too. And what happened to that other? Yeah, and this. I'm really interested to see that this, just the same idea. We're going to use a piece of pattern paper. Does it have to be so patterned, like, like an actual picture of a pattern, or could it just be like a nice pattern? Maybe we could make a background paper, you know, like with some sprays and stuff. You know what? I even have some from another video that I made, um, <clears throat> like with some sprays, or this is just like some, some leftover sprays, do you know what I mean, where I used this already? And can you see how this would look so good just like this? And that would be the card. Not as good because we need some contrast there. But that would look really good just like that. Same thing with this. This is what I was thinking more with the lighthouse. If we like created a background, maybe like a water background. And actually I um, made a video uh, last month or the month before about ways to color water, um, ways to color in your stamped images with water. And I'll put that right up here. You can actually click on that and it'll take you to that video. You can see different ways to color water and make it look really nice um, for your stamping, your coloring, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm interested in stamping this lighthouse on maybe a sheet of this, putting it over a pattern paper. And as you can see, I've already stamped this onto vellum. Um, and we'll put it over a piece of pattern paper as well and finish it off. So let me grab some pattern paper and then we'll finish off these, uh, these two cards here. Okay, for my pattern paper, I'm gonna use um, some pattern paper from this Brown Mood Collection. This is by Craft O'Clock. This is the six by six pack, and it is available in the Sandpaper Road shop right now if you're interested. And I will put a link below in the description box. Um, we'll, and then we'll see what we can uh, put with it. First of all, when I open a new pack of paper, oh my goodness, I have to smell the paper. That's just me, I'm a little bit of a I just love paper so much. So this has uh, 24 sheets. Let's see what we've got here. It's a monochromatic set and I just absolutely think that it's going to look fantastic with the white sentiment on the vellum and I will save the gold one for another project. 
but I'm just not sure which one I'd like to use because I love them all. Oh, I think maybe that one. I always gravitate toward the wood, but I have, I did a card a few months ago with um, the June release set that was uh, wood with a white vellum thing over it. So trying to create a little bit of variety here um, with my choices. I really think this sort of this plaid, this argyle print is going to be it. Ooh, but look, look at the flowers. Oh, I think I'm repeating it already. Yeah, the wood, what comes after the wood? Yeah, the dots. No, I'm going to use that one. And then I think I'm going to, um, for accents, I think I will use some from the basic extra set. This is a fussy cut pack, or if you have a cutting machine, uh, like a scan and cut that, that'll cut it out. So I think maybe I will use uh, some butterflies and some clocks and maybe a few leaves, not those leaves though, maybe these leaves from it. <clears throat> Stick to the, ooh, oh, they're coming out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, it's because I just flung the envelope around, that's why. Okay, hold on. I'm having a, I'm having a problem. I'm losing my, I have these little clear envelopes and the papers kind of just fly around, but then I keep them all sealed up in one big envelope and keep them together by kit. Okay, so sorry for that little uh, distraction here. Let me sit down. And really, as you could see, this is gonna be pretty simple. You know, I am just now thinking of, um, some people really have questions about how to attach the vellum to the paper. So you might be thinking the same thing. Well, if it's clear and you can see through it, how are how do you attach it? And of course, I moved my um, my samples. But let's just let's just deal with that issue, okay? First, let's cut our card panel. You know what else? So let's see. You know what I'm thinking of doing on this one? I'm thinking of doing a split. I think I might do a split where it's like a half and half. Let me let me just cut my card panel. Then I can get away with using another side. <laughs> All right, so I will cut this this way. I have it marked on my um, paper cutter so that I don't have to look. It should go just like this, right. Okay, so there's this. This is an A2 size card. I've got uh, just a little bit shy of an A2 size card panel. A2 meaning we've got uh, four and a quarter inches this way, five and a half inches this way. It can open up forward or up, up and down this way in a panel like this. All right. Now, since I have this and I cut these two, what I was thinking of doing is just using this strip this way. I thought it was gonna be a little bit lighter, but maybe not. Okay. The great thing I do like about Technique Junkie stamps, sometimes I like it and sometimes um, I wish that it was a little bit different, but in this case I really like it because it's perfectly sized. The stamp itself is perfectly sized to fit an A2 size card as you can see. But because I'm using vellum, I think what I'm honestly gonna do is I am just gonna honestly use um, a basic staple. Some people like to use decorative brads and um, you would just punch, you know, like take like a paper piercer, which mine is stuck right now in my thing because it has some adhesive stuck to it, real nice. And you know, you could poke a hole and then put a brad through. Um, brads are just like things that have a little thing through it. How, how descriptive, right? But there's lots of neat decorative brads that you could find um, different colors, different kinds, you know, and so that's one way that you can attach your vellum is with a brad. But honestly, sometimes I just staple it. I don't even make a big deal out of it. I just, I honest to goodness, just staple it. Um, I just don't think it's that serious. So I think what's more serious to me is lining this up. 
and do I want it to go like this? Like, um, I'm gonna spend my time trying to figure out, do I want this on the bottom of the card? Um, <clears throat> if so, am I gonna cover it up like that? Well, then I'm gonna have a bubble in the middle, kind of. Um, I'm not sure. I think what I'm gonna do is just, maybe I will just staple it in the middle since we're doing a beginner one, huh? All right, we'll just do it as a beginner. So I'm gonna hold it right here. I've got my stapler. This is by Swingline. Um, I actually really do like the stapler a lot. And I'm just gonna go right in. <laughs> and I'm not, some people might be anti-staple your stuff. You know, I just, like I said, I don't take it that serious. And there we go. Then I just, I, I think there's a time that I like to use the brads. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me pull out my other examples here and I'll show it to you. And then I'm just turning the panel over, cutting it off. And that is a lovely card right there. Isn't that beautiful? We could save this for something else. Lots of stuff I could use for that. I don't even get want to get on a tangent. Um, and now I've got some butterflies and things that I've cut from this basic extra set. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Something with just, uh, ooh, I like this. Oh, this reminds me of, um, yeah, I don't really know that it goes with the, this, uh, nice little blessings. That's, that's nice there. Okay. Let me just pop his wings up a bit. Are these double-sided? No. Now maybe here would be a good, you know, um, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Notice that I didn't glue this down to the card right away because I didn't know how I was gonna attach the vellum. So I wanted to leave myself the freedom to do however I wanted. Now, if I would have glued this down right away, then if I stapled the vellum to it, you'd see the staple through the card. So I'm gonna wait and attach it last. I could put brads, I could poke holes in this, I could do whatever I want, and it's not gonna affect the opening of the card. So, um, just a little tidbit there. I think I am going to do I keep getting drawn to this butterfly. And if I put a frame and a clock, that would be kind of cool. I'd like to do three things. Let's see what I can do here. I really like this frame, but I don't want to take it away. This is the frame I want. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, that looks pretty good. And then I could put one down here, okay. And a third thing would be a clock, maybe. Well, no, I already have three things. So let me get that half clock right here. Okay, like that. Yep. Very nice, that's very nice. I, th I feel like I'm gonna need one more thing though. Cause see how it looks like, well, I don't know if you see the same way I see it, but it, uh, maybe I will use this, the dragonfly here. Like this, and then like that right over top. That looks much better. Okay, good. Well, I'll start here with this. I'll glue all this stuff down, okay. Again, I know this is uh, a video about the vellum, but you know, all this other stuff is just cutting and gluing, you know. Let's see, right like that. What I'm gonna do is glue it flat and then, but not glue the wings down. That's what I'll do. And then when that glue dries, then I'll kind of fold the wings up a bit. This is a Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive is the card making adhesive that I'm using. I really like it. 
not sure if you've tried that, but um, it's pretty good. I enjoy that a great deal. This frame I will glue all the way down um, because I don't want it to slide around under there. Okay. That is about as easy as you can get, isn't it? Okay, just a little bit there. All right, make sure I'm not going to cover up. I really want this to turn this way. Oops. Another reason why I like this glue. It dries matte, like a matte finish. So when you do what I just did, um, you don't see like a big glue mark. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's that's real nice. I'm sure I'm going to have to add some paint spatter because that's just my way. Um, well, maybe, well, let's see, maybe not. Grateful every day for life's little blessings. That looks fantastic. Just like that, doesn't it? <clears throat> I am going to add some, well, I might add some paint spatter on my own, but I might not. Maybe maybe for this one I won't, just for the video, because we're trying to keep it simple, huh? Okay. That's fine. I am using score tape, double-sided tape. Um, I used to use the Scotch ATG gun. I did really like the ATG gun. Nothing was wrong with it. Um, I think what started to happen was I started to make more mini albums and I needed a, a score tape to make mini albums. So I started to buy score tape in bulk and then um, I had all this score tape. Well, I didn't feel like buying score tape and then buying ATG tape, refill tape, just for card making or scrapbooking or something. So I just started to use score tape for everything. Yep, let's see. Hold this down and push this up. Uh oh, having a little bit of a, oh no, it's okay. Yeah, good, that looks real good. Just fold these little wings up a bit. Yeah, there, that's real nice. Vellum, really, really, really makes it nice. That is a really nice and simple card. I think for the photos that you'll see over on the blog, I am gonna jazz this up with some paint spatter and things like that. But just for now, you can see that, if, especially if you don't like a lot of busyness in your card, and the staples, how simple could that get? Okay, so that's a good way to use vellum in your, uh, for a sentiment. Now let's move on and I will um, give this other stamp a try. This Lighthouse stamp, make another, I don't know if this is a card, is it? Yeah, I'll make a card with this. Yeah, I'll make a card with this. But I, it looks like from the size, I might have to do, I don't wanna squish it onto an A2 size card, do I? Let's see, A2, where are we looking at here? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I could do it on an A2 size card. So I guess I will. But then I'd have the whole thing covered in vellum. If I made my card a little bit bigger, then I could have some of it sticking out, but I could use a sentiment here. How would I do that? Let's see, should I stamp the sentiment on the vellum? And then the sentiment that I want, what is the sentiment that I want? And then I will, um, yeah. All right, sorry for my rattlings. Yeah, I think I know what I'm gonna do here. Now let me get my supplies, I'll be right back. Okay, I did finally make some decisions here on my, um, on my pattern paper. For my pattern paper, for this card that I'm gonna make, I am gonna go with something from Sea Stories. Um, this is another uh, paper collection by Craft O'Clock, and I do have it available at the Sandpaper Road shop. And so my, this was the pay, this was the one I used for a different card before. And well, no, actually it might've been the Mandela one for a card. But I thought that since a lot of my cards this month are dark, see at first I wanted to use that one, but then I thought, no, that's okay. I like this 
um, one with the map so much, um, and the little hats, but I think I am just going to go with a plain background. Oh, see? Well, I'm having trouble deciding. That would be cool. That would be so cool to have it in vellum like that. So I can't decide right now between those three, but I'm going to stamp it on vellum first and then hold them up and see which I like. These are going to, it's definitely going to be a green uh, paper. There we go. And I'll leave this out here just actually so you can see. Okay. That's the sea stories and that's the embossing powder. I'm going to use white and I'm going to use Versamark. Okay. And that way you can see, and I'll put my glue over here too, just in case you're interested. Well, you can't really see my glue. I'll just link below. This is the sentiment that I chose the let the sea stir your soul. Um, I cannot remember. This might be an old sentiment, an older one from for them, but this is for their new release their August release. So let's see what we can do here with this. This is actually going to be pretty easy because I'm not doing any embossing of different colors. It's just going to be white no matter what. Um, yeah, this is going to be a, a easy breezy. Okay, probably the biggest pain is going to be to open up this pack. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> it came right open. Okay, then. Let's see. Like I said, this was given to, uh, gifted to me. Uh, so let's see what we're getting into here. Ooh, very nice. Now this, I'm going to say, is much thinner in feel. Does it have a weight on it? Yes, it does. 30 pounds. No wonder. Oh, because it's inkjet, because it can go through your printer. Oh, no wonder. All right, well, we'll see uh, how we like it. All these dots, patterns, that's going to be tricky. I just want a plain piece, if possible. Hmm. None of these are plain. They're all patterned. Not what I thought I was going to get. I suppose I could have looked right on the thing. I thought this swirl was going to be a little bit less busy. I could do it on this um, striped one, I suppose. Do it this way. I suppose I could do it on the dotted one. That's just so much. Yeah, I don't know if that's the look I want. I don't like, I don't want the lines. I don't want it to be patterned, but I don't have any plain vellum. Hmm. This is going to be not, not what I, maybe I have some more. This is not what I was thinking. Maybe I have some other vellum somewhere. see. What horrible preparation, huh? But I really thought that if I opened that on camera, I thought it was going to be a lot different than it, well, it definitely was a lot different. What is this? This is, this looks okay. What does this say in the background? This is just from my stash. I can't read it. Blessings, bliss, blessings, bliss, love, love, bliss, joy, celebrate, happiness. That'll be all right. Yeah, that's fine. I have this other pattern vellum. That might be, that kind of goes with this. I don't want the flowers though. No, that's the same problem I had before. What's this? Oh, here. How's this blue? I have a blue one. Let's see. I'm keeping that in the video because I wanted you to see the different kinds of vellum that um, you might 
have in your stash. Uh, I don't know if, let's see what we're gonna. Oh, that, this one's nice so far. Ooh, this one's nice so far too. I like the blue. All right, well, let's just see, shall we? Let's just see. Well, I opened that pack for nothing. I'm going to use my stamping tool. They don't make this particular stamping tool anymore, sadly. Um, this is the Tim Holtz one. And I've had it for a while, so. Okay, so I'll put my paper on here. I'm making sure that it's going to sit. Since this has some words on it, we're going to put it so it sits nice. I'm going to put this just anywhere. Okay. Tear that off. However your stamping platform works. Let me do this because I don't like that glare. That's better. However your stamping platform works, I can't imagine it would be too different from this one. Concept being you can re-stamp, right? Uh, I think what I'll do is this first and then the sentiment after. Is that a wise idea? I think it is for me. I, mean, I have this little anti-static powder bag or like an embossing buddy or something like that. My son got it for me. It was in my Amazon wish list and um, he got that for me. Alrighty. I'm trying to reduce the glare here. All right, let's see what kind of image we get. Where's my cloth? Okay, I tip my head in the light and it actually looks pretty good first time around. So I am going to, um, Hmm, what am I going to do now? I think what I'll do is position I should have done this all at once. Oh well. Oh well. I have a stamping platform, so I can do how I want it. All right, let's see. I do have the my white embossing powder in this little container. It just makes my life easy. It's just an old lotion container, actually. Let's see how much of a mess I can make or not make. That looks pretty good. Let's redo this part right here. Ah! There's a hundred thousand tips and tricks for doing stamping, or I mean embossing powder, and I <laughs> always tend to ignore them all. I get in such a hurry because I just, I know what to do and I, I just ignore them. I just do it how I do it. No offense to all, to everybody who has those tips and tricks, because I have my own set of tips and tricks, but there are some that I use and some that I just ignore. So I'm gonna heat set this with just my plain heat gun. I will cut this out. Okay, this looks fantastic. I actually really like it, and I'm glad that I used this vellum. I'm, I'm actually very happy about it. So now I can put this right back. Um, get rid of this for now put the sentiment where I want it why didn't I just do them both I don't know I probably should have but I didn't so 
it doesn't hurt anything but I can't well actually you know what coming to think of it I could uh, do that the next sentiment that I'm doing I could do it in black to be honest Ooh, I didn't even see this see let me see something here before I do, let me see something here before I do this because I could decide whether I want the sentiment in white or black Ooh, look at that see look how good that looks with the ship behind it that looks fantastic look at it it looks great oh my gosh I love it with the ship behind it can you see that it looks like it's off in the distance I'm doing this in black and I'm gonna do it right there oh my gosh that's gonna look so good yeah that's gonna look fantastic Okay, so how am I going to remember this? I guess this is how. <laughs> I just put it where I wanted and set it on the thing. All right. It's, I suppose it's not rocket science, is it? Just paper. Okay, so that's about where I want it. Now, I will straighten it out for heaven's sake, but that's where I want it. Okay, right there. Now, this is something that I do when I'm using my stamping platform is when I lift it up, I make sure, because there's a grid here, hopefully yours has a grid as well, and I do make sure that, the, especially with a sentiment, that it's straight with the grid. Okay. Okay. And I will do it in black, as a matter of fact. Oh no, I lifted it up. Oh no, it came right off. Goodness sakes. All right, well, we'll just try it again. Okay, just barely. Now let's, now what I'm gonna do is repowder this. Now, hopefully, I don't know why this didn't stay, but it should. Oh my gosh, it did it again! What is going on? This is quite upsetting. I don't want to keep putting my sentiment where I like on the vellum. I've got like kind of a one-stop shop here. So I'll put this paper down here. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. It shouldn't come right up. Okay. That actually came out, that was actually a good stamp. I'll clean that up later. Let's do the black. Too big for my table. Okay, where is a paintbrush? See how this happened up here? I just take a paintbrush and go like that. Yeah, just because there's powder there doesn't mean powder has to stay there. See, I got there's a little bit that's stuck to some over here too. But it doesn't have to be there all right good I'm happy with that and now we will um, that looks good just like that actually you don't want to overheat when you're using vellum um, so heat your gun off of the off of the surface especially with thin vellum
That's it. It and only do it right until it melts. Don't overdo it, or you'll warp your vellum. That looks fantastic. Look at that. Oh my goodness, real nice. Okay, so I love this with the um. Yeah, that looks excellent with the pirate ship there. Okay. So I'm going to cut this. Maybe I should tear it. That would probably be good. I'm going to do a straight edge tear here. Okay. Is this what I want? A straight edge tear. Well, yeah, because I want it along here. So let me do a straight edge tear. Oopsie. Okay. And now, uh, and see how that did like that? I'm not, I don't care about that. I'll fix it up in a minute. Okay. Now, because I really want, I'm trying to get it to match the boat thing underneath. Card panel is what I want here. Okay. Let's see here. Get this to a six. And then that will trim this here. Now I'm going to clean this up. For this one, how, let's talk about how we're going to attach the vellum and how much do we want to cover up the whole thing here. Maybe we could do metal corners or little um, embellishments or something. Ooh, or like some magic mesh or some rope or twine or something like that. Yeah, or little, little wheels. Um, that would look cool too. Yeah, that would look cool too. Maybe a little bit of a blue, um, uh, like a, a distress crayon or something right here. That would look cool too. Let's see, as a matter of fact, do I have a blue distress crayon? Yes, I do. Is that what I want to happen though? Let me try it on this. What's it look like? Um, I don't know. I actually think it's fine the way it is. Okay. Uh, this one, I, I might add little metal brads. I've got these. And I thought I had some good, like, square ones that are, like, decorative type square brads things. So we'll add some brads, I think, maybe. And let's see what we can do. Okay. I forgot to mention, since we are talking about vellum, is that another way that you can adhere vellum to your pattern paper is actually you can find, especially if you're stamping on top of it first, like I could get away with gluing, putting glue right here where all this white is and sticking it down and that would adhere it down or even better sometimes liquid glue can be a little bit funny so maybe i'd want to use um you know so, so just some basic dots some clear dots these are zots uh by where did these come from oh these are thermo web i was about to say Okay, and these are nice because they're clear, and um, yeah, I might try to do that, actually. I think that's going to save me a little bit of trouble going forward. So I'm just going to put a few of these dots right behind where the stamped image is, 
and because they're clear now let me show you what I mean why I would do it behind where's a piece of the vellum all right here's the vellum that I used right now if I put just a dot on here see how you can see that dot through it just slightly and you're not going to really want that to just be sitting there like that but because it's behind the stamped image um, you're really not going to see that at all I could still use brads and things but just for the basic sticking of it down um, in this case because um, I've got a stamped image there which this will not come off what is the problem I'm having so many problems today do every, any of you ever have that? You just have a day where just your supplies just don't want to work. Ah! Ah! Sometimes I edit that stuff out and sometimes I leave it in because I think to my, especially in the beginner, oh my gosh, especially in the beginner card making videos, I tend to leave it in um, because sometimes I think beginner card makers uh, think that we, uh, you know, we do everything perfectly or we just can sit right down and make a beautiful creation first try. And <laughs> most of the time we edit that stuff out. So when we're making our videos like this, that dot didn't want to stick. So there, that's going to be plenty. Um, I, actually, I think I'll put one more up here by the top of the lighthouse. Um, again, you could use liquid glue if you wanted. But, uh, yeah, right there, that's fine. See, now when I stick it down, I really want it to, because I really want it to go at a certain place. Watch it get crooked. right there right there yeah that looks good cool yeah that looks pretty good now I'm just gonna treat this I think I'm just going to treat this all as one card. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Right like this. See, I'm cutting the top and the bottom pieces together just treating it all like it's one card even though it's two separate pieces it actually looks kind of good did I cut this funny no I did it right yeah that looks great look at that <laughs> that little ship in the distance it looks good now let me show you about brads this is my card base that i'll use okay what what is this here oh it's just like a little design you could use one in a corner oh this is they, this actually matches real nice yeah that's good I think I'll do corner and corner, maybe. We'll start with that, something that matches. I have a little just plain old hole punch. So I think that that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna turn my punch upside down so I can see where I'm punching the hole. And punch the hole. And put the brad in. and then turn it so that it doesn't hang out of the sides there. Like, just like that. 
Now imagine, I'd, I wouldn't have to have the sticky stuff here. I could just use brads to attach it, which would be fine too. Um, sometimes I like to do that and sometimes I don't. And I am just literally eyeballing that. That looks great. I don't know that I'm gonna do them in all four corners, as a matter of fact. I think I'm just gonna do these two because I think that kind of looks good. Yeah, that looks really nice. Look how it looks on the, against the blue. Ooh, it looks excellent. Look at that. See that with that background? That looks good. Let's turn that so he's out of the way. I have a uh, couple embellishments from this set. This is from the 12 by 12 set. These are the 6 by 6s I didn't use. So maybe I can get like a wheel or a whale or something like that to go with it. Just like this. That looks good. I wish I had one a little smaller. I thought I did have one a little bit smaller. I have this a little bit smaller. Oh, but I don't want to cover up the ship. Maybe I could do it underneath. Oh, maybe I could do it to the side. Like that. I don't want it to float though. by the lighthouse off to the side that looks kind of weird maybe this maybe this bring back to the lighthouse that's good Maybe that and the half thing. How many things do we have? One, six, ha ha. That's why it looks funny. I don't like to float stuff though. That's the only thing is I just don't like to float stuff. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll do that. Okay. What happened to that thing of dots? <laughs> Look at my table. <laughs> there we go. Let me use the bigger ones. I have some bigger dots. They come in the small and the medium. I like that. Yeah, let me do that. That looks good. Okay. All right. Now that looks real nice. But you could see the stamping on the vellum, how easy that was. Honestly, the hardest part was dealing with my stamping platform. Uh, once I got it stamped, I just stuck it on with the dots, added a few embellishments, and I'm going to stick it to my card. That is a nice card right there. I love this lighthouse stamp set. That just looks so good. I kind of do want to add just a bit over there. Do I? I feel like once I do it, I'm going to regret it. Uh, I think I'm going to regret that. Don't I have a different blue? But it doesn't really go. No, I've got to just be content. Salty Ocean. What about my sprays? Maybe the mermaid spray. No, I think I'm going to leave it. I think I just need some paint spatter like I did on the other one. That's, I think that's the thing that I just need. It'll look just fine. I need to bend these though so that they're not seen. Okay. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching me make these cards today. And um, 
you can check out the entire new stamp release at TechniqueJunkies.com. They come out with new releases every month and they're really, really unique stamps. I really, really like them, honestly, honestly. Do you know what? Should I do a metal corner right there? Maybe that's what it needs. What happened to my metal corners? I pulled these. I think it needs one metal corner. How do I open this? Are they stickers? I think these are stickers. Oh, they are. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what it is. Look, watch this. Watch. Stick this down. Now I was going to add some paint spatter, which I still might. But look what, see how it, maybe to you it looks fine. But to me, it looks like I need something, just one more thing. And to me, if I go like that, that's the thing. See? That's to me, that to me is what it needed. Cool. I love how you could see the ship in the back. That just makes my whole day. That's, that's really cool. I wonder how it would look with another, with the, uh, let me do this without, let me see what this would look like. I don't want to stick it down, but I cut it out of the thing. Let me hold it up here and see how it looks. Um, that actually looks kind of good. That actually looks kind of good. I think I'm going to do that. It covers up the top of the lighthouse, but I don't think I mind. That looks kind of good. I like it. Good. I like that a lot. Cool. All right, let me clean up my table for heaven's sake, and then I'll show you a final look at all the cards I made today. Okay, so I'm going to show you a final look at all the cards. Certainly, you can head over to the Sandpaper Road blog to see um, close-up photos of all of these, plus links to purchase any of the things in case you're interested in picking up the stamp sets or the paper that you saw in this video. Uh, with the exception of the vellum, um, I can give you a link to some vellum, but I don't have any in my shop. So this was the first one that we saw um, with the vellum uh, sentiment. Just love this one. Here is the one that's the shaker. Okay, again, with the simple stamped on the vellum and embossed in white. Then we have, this is the simple uh, stamped on vellum. We've got this was adhered separately, stamped and adhered separately right on top with the glue dots, just like I showed you earlier. I'm sorry, the zots, um, and then put down with brads. And now I think that I'm showing you this look again, you could pr probably appreciate more the um, adhering. This was just used with the staples, okay? And this, because it was a shaker, I actually just used gl regular old glue and then put the frame over top to hide where the glue was. And again, this is done with brads. And then this one from today, of course, I couldn't resist adding just a little bit of paint spatter in black uh, to the edges. And this again, done in staples, attached down. Love that sentiment, so nice. Really, really nice sentiment. Great for a variety of different um, seasons. And then finally, the Let the Sea Stir Your Soul stamped um, on the vellum with the white sentiment in black adhered with the zots behind the image but then just accentuated with a few brads on top so certainly hope that you enjoyed this video um, please consider subscribing and if you've uh, benefited from this video and uh, would like to show appreciation please consider leaving sandpaper or buying sandpaper road a coffee and there'll be a link here where you can check that out. It's just a nice way to say thanks for the free tutorials. You can head over to the Sandpaper Road blog for close-up photos and links uh, for all the products that are used. 
Special thanks to Technic Junkies today for providing the stamps. I uh, really like being a part of their creative team and it's um, really fun to work with them. They're nice people. Also, special thanks to Craft a Clock um, for uh, the previous involvement in their design team. Really had a great go with them and I'm very, very pleased to offer Craft a Clock products here in the USA uh, in my shop. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial and um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.